YouTube, welcome back. A common question that I get on stream a lot of the time is how do you control your audio paths? How do you designate where they go? And how can you avoid, say, a Twitch VOD with music? Music is one of the most common things. Maybe you listen to something that might get flagged as a DMCA, something like that. I'm going to show you guys how to configure or at least understand the concept. And you can use this concept for a multitude of different things. You can do it for video games, you can do it for browsers, you can do it for um, music, you could literally do whatever you want with your audio pathing. And I'll teach you the general concept so you can understand how you can utilize that to your benefit going ahead for your own recording or streaming. All right, so probably the first thing here to talk about is uh, all the different windows that we have here. So we'll, we'll talk about voice meter towards the end here. You got your control panel, you got your sound settings for windows here in the bottom right. In the middle, you have all of your different playback and recording options, which we'll talk about. And then of course, in the bottom left here, we have uh, OBS. So OBS, you can see my mic that's popping right now. If I went ahead and went to go play something right now via audio, you could hear that too, uh, as that comes in. We're gonna pause out here for a second. Now, by default, OBS sets up your desktop audio to take in everything that you have from your computer. So what does that mean? That means basically Discord, music, games, etc. Now, where is that desktop audio being told? Well, it's over here. So when you go to your control panel, this is the main screen up here, all control panel items, and you're going to find a thing that says sound. Sound opens up this window right here. As you scroll down, anything that you have or a playback or you know, headphones, etc. speakers is going to come into this tab right here. The recording that's more for your mics, all the different things that you might have set up on that side. So we're gonna talk about the playback. Now in the playback, for me, I have what's called voice meter. There's different versions of this. We'll talk about that a little bit later because it gets a little bit more complex with that program in play. However, let's say you have a headset, Corsair, whatever, it doesn't matter. Maybe you have a DAC system. Whatever your default is on Windows right here with this little check mark, default device, is what's going to be coming through on the desktop audio. So let's talk about that for a sec. We go into the settings and you look at the audio here. This is where you're going to see where this first initial setup is showing you all that details. So my mic is a digital in, comes from my stream PC, and for my desktop audio, it's the default. Now, if I click down here on this button right here, I'm gonna see all the same individual options that I see in this list right here on the playback in Windows. So over here, generally speaking, you're gonna have your check mark. In order to assign an individual path, so the main issue is that when I'm listening to music, it's coming in on my default audio. Now everything comes into that path. So how do I split it? Well, when you're setting up your OBS scenes, you might have multiple, maybe you only have one, but in the actual sources, you can open up a source and when you apply an application audio capture, now I think this is embedded into the default uh, OBS package nowadays. If not, you can just Google this, uh, this name up right here and I'm sure it'll come in with a plugin. But regardless, you go ahead and you add this in. Now it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna make the name? So I'm just gonna say Spotify, okay? Spotify is pretty basic. A lot of people use that for the purpose of music. And again, understanding this general concept is gonna apply to whatever way you wanna configure this down the road. So when you do that, you press okay. Now it says, well, what window? What window do you wanna assign it to? So right here, if you have, you have to have the program open. So if this is Spotify, you want Spotify open at this point because it's going to read all the windows that you have right now. You're gonna go ahead and select the Spotify and then you're gonna click okay. Now, that has added that into your audio mixer line, as you can see right here. Now, it's very easy to delete or add stuff into this list, so if you didn't want that, you could just remove it, hide it, or like we showed in the actual audio, you would just disable this. And if you disabled this default, I'm gonna leave it up just to show you the concepts here. You can remove and hide and, and whatever, you could mute, etc. Now, let's go ahead and play some music really quick. Now, it's showing in two different locations now. So, if I wanted to, I could remove this desktop audio entirely, which is what I recommend here, especially if you want to separate your Spotify. Now, there's a bit of work that you're going to need to do because when you start to separate path lines and not use your default audio setup here, it's going to essentially require you to add in every single audio path line that you do want to be heard on the stream. Now the advantage here, you can change individual volume settings for each single one and, and scale that according to your um, your requirements or your wants or your needs just to make the audio uh, sounding really nice. So that would go for any single game that I would want to play. I would have to do this exact same process. 
would open this up. I would add in whatever I wanted to. I could do it for a browser. I could do it for a video game. And I could even do it for, say, Discord. So you could go in Discord like this and select Discord like so. Again, when it says matches title, it should just match the, the main program. So you shouldn't have to refresh this over and over and over. Now that's essentially what that's gonna look like. Now, one of the things that I wanna make a mention, just really lightly, I'm not gonna go into this too much, but a lot of people will be looking at that, that point, this little solution here and being like, dang, that's a lot to do every single time. And I don't disagree. So this is where voice meter comes into play. So back to this little point here with the check mark, voice meter is actually my default. The voice meter is a program that essentially is like a digital mixer. So you can set it as a default for Windows. You can specify up here through A1 through 5, and there's different versions of uh, voice meter. The potato version does have a licensing requirement which I've paid for and I appreciate because they do amazing work. And so there are free versions of this, which are labeled like banana. And there's another one there. So you can just see what works best for you. But the general concept is this, is you set this voice meter input as your default kind of headphone thing. And you tell where you want this to hardware output. That's where it says right here, hardware out. And so I've told it to not only go to my DAC, which controls my headphones, but I've also told it to go to uh, another location, which actually pushes it over to my stream. Really, it's just for whatever you want to put it to. Um, for me, it's different purposes for like different headsets and uh, my stream and et cetera. So the advantage here is that let's say you wanted still everything to come into your headphones, but you only wanted to select certain things for the stream. You could still do that quite conveniently. You would just set it on the default like I have right here with the voice meter. You would set it to broadcast to wherever headphones you wanted to, and then you would select that and everything in your programming would come to that location. This uh, voice meter route works well with this solution. I'm gonna show you guys two solutions, okay? So the voice meter solution is that Windows has the ability to tell which programs go where. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this. This opens up, again, this was the sound settings. So you're gonna to go to your search bar, you're gonna type in sound, and then this window is going to come up. As you scroll down, you're going to see a thing that says advanced sound options. When you go into the app here, you can then scroll down to any of the open programs that you have right now, and you can actually tell them to go somewhere specific. Why is this advantageous? Well, let's say you had everything going default into the voice meter potato. This would mean that I would not have to set up Spotify right here. This means that I could still use the desktop audio. Well, why? Well, I could then tell Spotify to go to the default location of just my headset. Let's say this was my headphones that I actually have on right now. In my case, it's actually my DAC, so maybe I'll use this as a reference. So this is my DAC, this is where my headset is going right now. Everything else on my computer could go into voice meter. That would allow me to then have the, the music going to me on my headphones. So then what happens is the default path would not have Spotify going to it. Let me just show you an example. We're gonna go back over here. We're gonna want this Spotify. I just wanted to do it over again here. You can select the Spotify window just like so. Now, something that I recommend for this solution is going to the window match priority, is going to match title, otherwise find window of same executable. This just solves it from uh, like if it shows the actual name of the song and the song changes, it might not capture that window anymore. And then you'd have to go in there and it'd be really annoying. So the same executable will essentially just look for the program file itself. So when you select that and you go to play it, there you can see that it's coming through on the Spotify, but not on the desktop audio. So if I wanted to play something else from, say, uh, YouTube or say, play my game, I'm just going to make an example here really quickly I'm gonna play another song. That's YouTube happening right now. It's a DMCA free song, but you can see that it's coming in on the desktop audio and not on the Spotify. So I can pause the Spotify just like that. And I was able to hear that Spotify song the entire time. So again, that's something that you can do by utilizing the Windows feature of assigning it to your headset, utilizing voice meter potato or whatever version to control the defaults just a little bit different. So it does get really complex and you could do a lot of things with this concept. So again, you have kind of two options. The first option is going into your OBS and adding every single independent audio pathline that you want, whether it be say Discord, music, 
your video games, whatever you want to capture, you have to capture this independently. And that would be by deleting the desktop audio or just muting it or whatever. That way you could then control every single volume slider that you wanted video game, music, Discord accordingly and scale it against your mic and you could have full range control over every single application. So that's option one. You don't want to do that every single time that you play a new game, which can be a bit tedious. This is the other route that you can go. You go with a voice meter, download that, set it to your default on the windows, and then go over into the sound program configurable uh, options and select, say the music only to your headset. And then from there, you can then just add in Spotify by itself, thus isolating that one. That's just for the configuration. Now you might be asking, okay, that's cool, that's, that's fine and dandy, but how do we avoid the Twitch VOD track? Now this goes for not only multi-streaming, but also the Twitch VOD track. We're gonna go into the OBS program here and you just go to the output selection. There's an output mode, simple and advanced. So you're gonna go to the advanced tab. This opens up a few more options here. So you're gonna see that it says Twitch VOD track, it has all these different numbers and whatnot. So you're gonna to want to go ahead and check it. Now you're telling OBS which track do you want the Twitch VOD to avoid. So in this case, more times than not, everybody uses channel one. But for the purpose of avoiding music on the Twitch VOD track, we're going to select number two. So it's just going to be mirroring this. So you would click apply, you would click OK. There's one last step that you would do. You would then go ahead and go into where your audio mixer is. You would hit this triple dot and you would go to the advanced audio properties. Now in here, you're gonna notice that it sh shows all of your audio path lines here, and it shows all the tracks that it's broadcasting on. So in this case, I want to remove Spotify, which controls my music, to track two, which then coincides what we just saw in the output right here on number two. So that means that when I stream and I save it on the Twitch VOD, path line two will not save to the VOD track, which I've assigned Spotify to not broadcast on. So you can use the same concept going forward for anything else that you don't want to have tracked on that path line. Now this is good for multi-streaming and this is also good for anything DMCA related. When it's playing and it's active, if, if you want to see all unactive sources, so active just means things that are always there in the background. Sometimes if you set it up to like show or not show, you see how I, I just did that, the visible eye, it went away. So depending on how you have your sources set up, if they're always broadcasting, then they'll be in here. But if you don't see it, then just uncheck that and you'll you'll see everything. It might take a second to load. But the general concept right there is, again, you can control this for multi-streaming. So a good example is this, you know, if you say stream to say Twitch and say YouTube, YouTube does not mess around with DMCA stuff. They'll just shut your stream down and give you a flag. So anything that you run in your normal broadcast, whether it be a meme thing or a portion of audio that you don't want to have covered, you would find it in this advanced audio property and then uncheck number two on that path line. And then when you're setting up your multi-stream option, there's multiple RMTP plugins that you can set up. And within there, it'll actually show you what audio path line do you want this broadcast to take? So an example, when I set up my say YouTube or anything else that I don't want to have these DMCA things on, I will assign it to path line two. So yes, you might have a thing during your broadcast that goes off and there's no audio for it, but hey, that's the that's the balance that you play with these types of things. So that's the general concept. Hopefully this gives you the rough idea. There, there's multiple ways that you can set up your audio. So I showed you kind of two ways. One is, you know, adding in everything by itself. The other one is adding in just Spotify, assigning windows to broadcast it to your headphone only. That does require something like voice meter to kind of work because Again, the reason why voice meter is relevant here is because normally you would have your headphones as the default. So even if you did the headphones by the default, this is what OBS would be taking. So even if you changed it here, it's still the same default. So it, it, there's no separation there. This basically, the voice meter gives you another layer of audio configuration, which then allows for this separation. So depending on what works best for your own broadcast, that is kind of what I recommend for you to do. Hopefully that explained it. And if not, feel free to jump into the, our Discord or our live stream and ask away or down in the comments as well. I'll definitely try to answer if there's uh, any questions. So hopefully that helps you. And uh, We'll see you later.